There's a secret Chinese war happening here on the streets of America, and you guys have no idea how deep this runs. Guys, this is a very, very sensitive topic, and so I hope you understand when I say, when I talk about this, I have to be very balanced. I have to walk this, the, the middle path. I can neither be foul nor beast, and there are reasons for that, of course, which you'll find out. But I want to educate all of you guys, anyone in America, and this actually will pertain to other Western countries as well. I want you guys to know about this sort of secret war for your opinion, the secret Chinese war for your opinion that is happening in the United States right now. So let's start out by talking about our two players. We've got two sides here, guys. We've got the Chinese government, the Communist Party, um, and they are on the one side. On the other side, we have a religion, uh, which actually in China is called an evil cult, called the Falun Gong. And these two groups are trying to persuade you to take their side. Now, I'm going to explain to you how. Uh, and, well, let's just get into it. So when I got to America, I noticed something that I'd never seen before. In fact, I have a flyer right here that I'm going to show you. Um, Ta-da! Shen Yun. Now, first of all, I, because I have a lot of subscribers that watch my videos, they were suggesting, oh, you should go and take a look at this. This is a fantastic Chinese dance troupe type thing, and they have a big extravaganza. So I was kind of surprised to see these flyers everywhere. I, in fact, picked this up out of a, a, a barber, a hairdresser, um, a Vietnamese hairdresser of all places, where I went to go get a haircut. But I also noticed them being stuffed as junk mail into mailboxes. I saw a billboard even with one of these next to the highway. Um, can't remember where, but I saw one of these uh, actually on my last trip in January, somewhere down near San Francisco. And I was like, what the hell is this? Why have I never heard of it? And um, on the back, it says absolutely the number one show in the world. Um, it's got endorsements from celebrities like Kate Blanchett, etc., etc., and you know I know quite a lot about China, and because I've been living there for so long and being married to to Chinese family and stuff, but I'd never heard of this. So I was curious, and I asked my friend uh, about this, a friend of mine here who's married to a Chinese wife, and he said, "Whatever you do, don't take Sasha to see it." And I was like, "What do you mean? It seems like it's about Chinese culture and stuff. She'd probably enjoy it." He's like, "No, no, 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 no." That caused big problems with my marriage because he's married to a Chinese lady and slightly older, um, like the older generation, sort of in, you know, in, in your 50s type, middle-aged, right? And uh, basically, he said he took her to see it and it ended up at the end when they walked out, she was furious, she was upset and it caused a huge amount of arguments and trouble with their relationship and almost, you know, put an end to their relationship actually. And I thought, this sounds really weird, right? So I thought I'd uh, look it up, and it turns out it's got heavy ties to the Falun Gong. Now, let's talk a little bit about the Falun Gong. Uh, from now on, I'm going to call them the FG, because even mentioning their name in China can get you into trouble. Uh, they are completely banned in China. Uh, China sees them as, as an evil cult. Now, you can just look them up, and you can find out and kind of make up your own mind. But basically, they've got a massive agenda to try and get the support of the Western world and anyone who will listen to them because they are persecuted in China, which they are. I mean, if you, if you practice this religion or cult or whatever you want to call it, you will get arrested. You will go to be detained. There will be some crap going on. But at the same time, these guys are super annoying. Okay, I've got to be bluntly honest, at least in my experience, because remember, I talk from experience, not hearsay. In my experience, the, the FG are basically the Jehovah's Witnesses of Asia. If you've ever had a flyer put on your car, which I have had at the San Diego Zoo, when I took Sasha there, I came, came out, there's this flyer with these disgusting pictures and talking about organ harvesting and, you know, that kind of thing. That's the Falun Gong. When I went to uh, Washington DC in the National Mall, they had them standing there protesting with their big placards. Looked kind of like a semi-permanent place they were set up. And you know, they've got their big things with organ harvesting and you know, this, the terrible things that happened to their members uh, in mainland China, etc., etc. So they're everywhere and they're, um, 
trying their best to spread the, the message and spread the word all right, through various different means. And it turns out Shen Yun is one of them. There's a whole lot of their messages and propaganda built into the performance itself. And that's why my friend's wife got so ex upset because it, you know, the stuff that they were saying in the performance is completely counter to the, the narrative in China and completely counter to the way she grew up. And of course, you know, you've got two sides to every story, but let's just put it that way. I want you guys to know what's going on. Now, let's talk about the other side, which is the government, you know, the, the Communist Party. Now, what they do is they've basically infiltrated all of the big universities here through something called the Confucius Institute. All right. Now, I can say for an absolute fact that they are there to try and censor and at least channel the way people think about China and the opinions towards China, because it happened to me. You know, I think it was two years ago when I first came to America for that big trip across America. I got invited by a subscriber of mine who is actually um, like a, he's a professor of journalism at the, the University of Arizona. That's what he does. He's, well, he's got something to do with the journalism department anyway. And he invited me to come and make a speech about my then new Conquering Southern China documentary. And, you know, I was very honored and I thought, sure, why not? So I went there and, you know, there was a classroom full of people. Had a projector, showed them the trailer, talked about some of my <clears throat> amazing adventures and experiencing the food and the culture. But there was a specific group in the classroom who really annoyed me, okay? So why did they annoy me so much? Well, it's quite simple. They kept interrupting me. And when I was trying to do my lecture or presentation, whatever you want to call it, they would constantly interrupt me and try to correct me or try to change what I said. So for instance, I'd say, you know, while we were traveling through Guizhou, it was incredibly poor. The people there are very, you know, impoverished. Uh, not trying to say it's a bad thing or anything, it's just a fact, you know, like what we'd see. And immediately they'd be like, no, but you know that China's got the biggest GDP up, you know, this and that and the next thing. And in America too, if you go to the south of America, they're, they're also very poor. Things like that. And that's got nothing to do with my presentation. It's kind of annoying. You know, if I say the, the condition of the roads were bad in the rural parts, they'll say, yes, but, you know, the conditions of the road in America was bad too. And, you know, this kind of a whataboutism stuff, the, the kind of thing I'm used to the, the ultra-nationalists saying in my comments section, but now they're saying this to me in real life and it's really annoying. So, obviously, completely besides the point, because I'm not trying to criticize and say it's bad, I'm just saying what it was like to ride through rural China, you know. Anyway, they were sitting there taking notes and all this kind of stuff, and I found it very annoying and upsetting that they would be doing something like that, you know, while I was, quite frankly, just having a conversation and just trying to show people the joys of traveling through China, you know, the amazing food and culture, it really took away from all of that. Anyway, this wasn't the first time I'd run into this uh, Confucius Institute because uh, this, this year, January, when I came to do Quest for the Best Chinese with Sea Milk. If you haven't seen it, guys, you have to. It's, we put a lot of effort into it and it, I think it came out really well. All of us, us trying the best Chinese food, authentic Chinese food, you know, that we could find in America on the West Coast. Uh, anyway, while I was here, uh, at the end of it, I had to go back to Arizona to leave my Corvette there because my friend lives in Arizona. That's where the Corvette stays when I'm out of America and it, it'll be back there again in a couple of days. So anyway, I went with my friend and the Confucius Institute, which his wife has now joined their activities. We're having a big concert. And uh, I thought, okay, sure, let's check it out. I'm not really into that kind of thing, to be honest, but uh, if not, why not? You know, it's a concert. So we went there and they had this beautiful orchestra there and they had the Chinese traditional instruments. And it was like a mixture of Western music and Chinese music. I'll be honest with you, it was actually a great show. Uh, it really came out well. I was very impressed. But again, every single time between songs, there would be like a monologue from this MC, who is a lady who is part of the Confucius Institute. And she was saying all these like things about China, how amazing the culture, how amazing this and that. And a lot of the things she was saying 
didn't sit right with me and they, they were over-exaggerated and they were misleading. And it's the kind of thing that if you lived in China, you would know that what she was talking was a bunch of bollocks basically most of the time. But there's nothing wrong with being proud of your culture and your country. And I actually appreciated that they were trying to show some sort of chi traditional Chinese culture, um, you know, very much like that, what's it called, oh, Shen Yun thing, where they're also trying to show some Chinese traditional culture, but mixing their messages in between it, you know? So anyway, um, after the whole thing, the lady that was actually sitting in my classroom that time I did a lecture like a year, two years before, she came over and she had a camcorder and she was recording me and asking my opinion about what I thought because she knows who I am. So I had to be very guarded with my words because once again she was trying to steer my words and put words in my mouth which I don't like. So she said what did you think of the performance and I was like it was really great for you to be able to show some traditional Chinese culture and I appreciate it that you give people the opportunity to see it and then she would be like yes but our culture this and that and you know basically just trying to steer my opinion which really really frustrates me so you see this is my own personal experience and I can tell you for sure that that Confucius Institute is there to keep an eye on the foreign Chinese students keep them in line you know steer their opinions make sure no one says anything they shouldn't say and at the same time try to steer the opinions of just normal people that are attending the university or going to these functions etc etc so this is what you have guys is you have these two different factions fighting for your opinion and the reason I'm making this video is it's so apparent to me and so annoying because while I'm here it's like having two annoying salesmen try to make you buy their product if you know what I mean and now that you are armed with that knowledge and you know who the players are and you know what the motivations are I would like you to make up your own mind and also, I would like to address something else. China Uncensored, the YouTube channel, um, in a previous live stream, I called them paid propaganda by the Falun Gong. And they took exception to this and made a little video thing. So, you know, I, in the comment section, said, I will stand corrected. Please tell me if these facts aren't true. And you can read the, the reply yourself here. Basically, maybe not paid directly but there is some funding and there's definitely a connection to the Falun Gong so you could I could say to correct myself that the China Uncensored channel is linked to and connected to the Falun Gong undoubtedly and uh, this is probably why there's such a heavy bias in the videos at being negative and trying to paint China in a negative light but I'm not saying that what is said on that channel is incorrect don't get me wrong it's just very exaggerated and biased a lot of it in fact all of it's really true so I hope that clears things up for a lot of you guys out there and now that you understand the two players make up your own mind I can't like I said choose a side here because that if I choose the wrong side you know if I choose the wrong side I could get into a lot of trouble my family could get into a lot of trouble so let's leave it at that guys I hope you have a wonderful week Thank you for watching, and as always, you know the drill. Stay awesome. You know, the one thing I love about visiting America, you know, is that I don't need to worry about evil uncles. Buy that merch. Catch me every Friday, guys, here on Serpents at A, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and Lawari 6 on Wednesdays, same time. Don't forget, most importantly, ADV China. You want to see some real adventures around the world every single Monday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Catch you next time.